What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting. ribbon cutting ceremony. It is really nice to be here today without a hard hat on. In the last 18 months as you've driven up Hayden Row Street, you've watched as bricks and mortar replaced enormous piles of earth which replaced felled trees. Today behind me stands the end product, not just of physical labor, but more importantly of a community's investment in the highest quality education. This is a true early childhood learning center. And yes, it all starts here. It all starts here. As a former English teacher, I might have circled it with my red pen and written antecedent question mark in the margin, which would have been my way of indicating that the pronoun had not been defined. So what is it that starts here? Foundations. Foundations in phonemic awareness, letter recognition, phonics, and reading. Students will compose and decompose numbers. But what it is will prove to be so much more. Children here will be nurtured, and in turn, they will learn to nurture. They will work and play alongside one another and gain a respect for the sameness and differences in this community and in the world more globally. They will build friendships that may last a lifetime. They will celebrate together. Ultimately, it, the it that all starts here, will prove to be the evolution of three, four, and five-year-olds becoming young adults who were uniquely raised, educated, and loved in this community, Hopkinton, Massachusetts. I welcome you all again. And as superintendent, I shall be honored to welcome nearly 700 students to this amazing facility, the Marathon Elementary School, in August. It all starts here. Thank you. Now I present Nancy Cavanaugh, the chairperson of the school committee. Thank you, Dr. Cavanaugh. Distinguished guests, students, colleagues on the state level, and partners who have helped build this. The elementary school building committee, my colleagues on the school committee. Thank you all of you for coming out today on this glorious and momentous day. It's a proud day for our town. This school, where it all begins for our learners, youngest learners, is the work of so many people. And the journey has sometimes felt long, but we did it. And I say we, because this is truly the work of our community. Whether you showed up for one of the focus groups, or whether you got out to vote first for the feasibility study, or later for the appropriations of the building, whether you followed along and cheered on the sidelines, this building and this project has enjoyed and benefited from this community's support. It will benefit all of us, whether we have children coming here or not. And I wanna also offer a special thank you to all of the people who had the vision the leadership and the perseverance to get us from the point where we realized that the constraints of center school were problematic to this day, today, when we can see all of the possibilities for our youngest learners as they embark on their educational path in the Hopkinton Public Schools. 
to the elementary school building committee, to my predecessors in the school committee, and all of the administrators, staff, and agencies who brought this project to fruition, thank you. I was imagining a morning like this back in 1928 when a group like ours came together to open the center school. It was like ours, but it was a little bit different. It was smaller because our town has grown, and it was different because the times have changed as our community has changed as well. We are part of a community that has grown and changed and continues to grow and change. And this school will carry us through to another new day in Hopkinton. Our dedicated educators are what makes our district so strong and so special. Providing them with the right <laughs> tools in the right space will enable them to take off in whole new ways. It's a new day here in Hopkinton and it's a happy sight when we'll see the kids here making history and imagining them filling these classrooms in September. Thank you all so much for coming. And with that, I would like to introduce Mrs. Lauren Dubow, the principal. I am just so very proud to be standing before you today on a truly momentous occasion. I have thoroughly enjoyed this process and the journey from a need to a fully recognized solution to our challenges at Center School. My experiences as principal of Center School have included traipsing wooden, are wooded areas as potential sites for an expanded school or a new school, participating in community forums in storms with attendees snowshoeing to ensure they could attend a true community commitment, from traveling to Boston for meetings with the MSBA and learning politely from the conductor that I was on the quiet train. I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, Needless to say, this project has included a variety of experiences over a number of years. Key to the success of this project has been a collective commitment of time, effort, and dedication which has yielded this magnificent school. The steadfast focus of the building committee, the collaboration between the OPM's Compass Project Management, the architects, DRA, and the construction company, Colantonio, has been immensely productive. The level of teamwork regularly demonstrated provides a sense that they are one rather than three differing organizations. What a testament to their professionalism and ability to work together to achieve a common goal. We, the staff and students, as well as the community, will benefit for years to come. I recently visited area preschools reading to future kindergarten students and talked about kindergarten and what they might see in classrooms and special areas of the building to help ease this upcoming transition. Their responses about the building are genuine and certainly brought a smile to my face. I often explain that kindergarten and Marathon Elementary are one in the same place. Sometimes they think kindergarten is something separate. That the lights can change color in the cafeteria, and while we have a variety of colors, I'm not sure they can be black, as one child had asked. And that while we don't have a hospital in the school, we do have a great nurse in a fabulous health office. One preschooler responded that in awe that he will be able to wash his hands in his classroom before snack. That's wonderful, was his authentic gener you know, reply, which speaks to the daily challenges that we face in our schools and to hear one of our own students in our public school system now appreciate the ability to wash his hands before snack, that kind of says it all. On behalf of the Marathon School community, please accept our greatest appreciation for your support of this new school. We look forward to expanded community engagement and strengthened partnerships as our young learners grow and thrive in an educational facility designed just for them. We also look forward to building a building that is designed to foster continuous learning and collaboration of our dynamic staff. Within these walls, we will learn, create, and achieve. Thank you providing this school where the educational introduction to the Hopkinton Public Schools will all start here. Thank you. I now introduce Mike Shepard, Elementary School Building Committee Vice Chair, who has much in this project, including the building of the time capsule that is in the wall. So when you have a tour later today, you'll know that his special work was there. 
Yeah, Mike Shepard, I'm on the, the building committee. And uh, several years ago, I spoke at town meeting when we were asking funny for money to fund this project. I promised that it would be a dynamic building and, and <clears throat> a structure that the entire town could be proud of for years to come. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank, and I'm going to read off a bunch of names, but I don't want this ceremony to go through without people knowing who the hard workers here are. The first was the architects, DRA architects. And we had an architect at all the job meetings. You know, he's been here for the last three weeks, camped out. His wife probably hadn't seen him. His name was Lee Rich. And he solved problems and got through issues and, and got us all squared away. Compass Project Management uh, managed the project for us. Uh, it's a requirement that the state, had, these are my grandkids, by the way. Um, <clears throat> and Bob Taylor, uh, Tucker, was here every day. And Jeff D'Amico pretty much ran the project from the Compass perspective. The builder, at, who I'm, I'm really proud of, was Colin Antonio. Colin Antonio is a building outfit from Holliston. And I had an opportunity to work with them before on another project. And uh, I knew they did good work. And Colin Antonio has an incredible staff. Fran Colin Antonio is up at the back. Uh, he's, he's the president. John Hobson, the guy, one of the guys with sunglasses back there, was a senior project manager and got things done. As you can see, this building is delivered to us three months ahead of time and significantly under budget. Um, <clears throat> Gary Sheridan is the guy that did all the work. He's the guy with the red shirt back there, looks like a working guy, because he was here every morning before the sun came up, and he stayed here. He's the last one that left at the end of the day. And he was here yesterday at night as well. Gary just ran all the subs and made sure it all worked seamlessly. I'll be right with you, honey. <laughs> <clears throat> we had, as you can see, and when you go through the building, you see we had the opportunity to have incredible artisans working for us, from the, from the brick masons to the landscapers to the people that did the, the concrete work to the people that did the floors to the people that provided us with the 32 different paint colors inside this building. Um, everybody was top draw, and that's why the project went so well. They all worked well together. But I want to mention one team. And when you go in here, you're going to be pretty much startled by the floors. The floors in the classroom, the floors in the hallway, the floors in the cafeteria are all what appears to be linoleum. And in it is inlaid footprints, fish. It all starts here. It's really cool. And this husband and wife team, his name was Cosmos and Marlene Rodriguez, worked six weeks to cut in all those items that are, you see in the floor, and they did it themselves. They worked six weeks, including Sunday. And they were driven, and they can see the craftsmanship is impeccable. Um, <clears throat> my grandkids have been telling all their friends that Grampy built this school for them. And in fact, that's the truth. Grampy did build a school for them. Harper will be going to the first grade, this one will be a kindergarten next year, and then pre-K, and all the way up. But we built a school for all the children of Hopkinton. And the biggest investment we can make is the educational opportunities for our youngest learners. And this place is, is going to be so dynamic and stimulating that it'll work fine. So I thank you for the opportunity. I also thank the, the kids from the high school, the band members, the Boy Scouts, and the kids that are inside that are going to guide you around for giving up their Saturday afternoon to help us with this, this, uh, this festive occasion. Again, thank you very much. And I want to introduce Brendan Ted. Oh, Harper Quinn. <laughs> Brendan Ted. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming out. Uh, I think about Center School when I look at this. And when I look at this gathering here, this is about capacity of Center School. Everybody here, this is about filled it up. Um, I went to center school, Mr. Shepard went to center school, my mother went to center school. Uh, this is not center school. This is a phenomenal piece of architecture. Um, Mr. Shepard and I walked through here uh, a few weeks ago and how he showed me each and every room, and like he said to you about the footprints <coughs> and the, and the cut-ins, he was showing me this like it was his own house or his grandkids. He was so proud, so proud of this. And 
uh, as am I. Uh, his list of people to thank mirrored mine, so I just got off about two minutes of, of uh, saying thank you to all you people. Um, this, is a, this is a phenomenal building. I would be remiss if I didn't mention all the hard work that my personal predecessor, John Mosier, did here before I took over. He was the, the uh, elementary school building committee guy, uh, selectman representation before I was elected. Um, and he also put his heart and soul into this. Uh, this building is phenomenal. Uh, I'm sad that my kids aren't going to be able to take part in, in, uh, in having an education. Uh, Mr. Bow, uh, you know, this is about as ultimate of an upgrade as you're ever going to get in your life in anything. Um, you know, with, with uh, it's just, it's, it's just a phenomenal building and the process was so eye-opening to me as a, as a member of the committee, how everybody in town came together from town meeting. And I remember Mike Shepard up there telling you how important it is for you to vote for this. And I may or may not have been a little skeptical. He's, he hit the nail right on the head. This is, this is great. Uh, thank you very much, everybody involved. Thank you for coming out. Um, and that's all I have. So I'm going to introduce uh, the chair of our committee, uh, Claire Wright. She's going to say a few words. And uh, thank you again. I was so glad I didn't have to be the speaker today and I could sit down and just listen to Brendan. But as I was getting ready for this today, I just, I started thinking about what this marathon school represents and I just wanted to share those couple thoughts with you because I realized that this school represents a lot more than just a school. Um, for one thing, it represents our community coming together, respecting one another and listening to one another to get what was right for our, our town. Those of you who have been here long enough remember, uh, long ago and far away, there was a thing called the Fruit Street School. And the town, our residents, for a variety of reasons, did not feel this was the right thing. Part of it because I think they felt it would divide our community and we are consistently one Hopkinton. And so, our town respected our residents, we listened to one another, those involved humbly went back to the drawing board to find an answer that was right. And that says so much about how we approach our problems, to listen and to understand and be respectful. And in the end, we get the perfect product. It also represents an excellent vision of the future and planning for the future. For one thing, we talked about another, a new school long ago to the point that we had the time to go back to the drawing board. We purchased fr the Fruit Street property over 20 years ago with the thought that we would need a new school. And we still had the time to recalculate. We even had the time to throw in four more classrooms when we realized it wasn't going to meet our need. So that, that planning and visioning process um, really has paid off for us. And, and finally, the visioning that we are here planning for, accepting, um, welcoming, investing in our growing, diverse, young population with a commitment to excellence. And we know the school has come at a price. Um, we all understand that and we are all willing to make that investment. So it just, to me, the representation of community, cooperation and respect, visioning, and an ongoing commitment to excellence is what we see here today. Thank you. The chairman of the elementary school building committee is the one who's made that all happen. The buck stopped here most of the time, so Joe, take it away. Thank you, Claire, and thank you, Brendan. And uh, I want to thank you both for stepping up a couple years ago to turn your passion for Hopkinton into a reason to serve on the Board of Selectmen. Whenever anyone does that, it strengthens our community and it makes our democracy stronger. And uh, thank you, Brendan, for serving on the Elementary School Building Committee, too. What a great day this is. Uh, and what an honor it's been to serve on the committee with these fellow citizen volunteers and professionals the past five years. 
There's a lot of talk about this school being the start of a marathon for our future students and the start of their educational journey. And that's really true and it's a really good analogy. And there's a great poster over in the HPTA tent there that says uh, finish line. And to me and to many of us here today, it feels a lot like uh, finishing a marathon. One thing I know from running marathons, as many of you who run know as well, is that what happens on marathon day is in large part a reflection of the preparation. Performance on marathon day is what we see. It's the outcome. We see finishes like Desi Linden and Yuki, uh, like this year, and we marvel at the performance under tough conditions. But performance on marathon day is really only a measure of the effectiveness of the training and preparation leading up to it over weeks, months, and years. That's the part that you don't see. So as you look at this beautiful building in front of you, what are the unseen forces that got us here? Well, what's defined this project more than anything, as some of our speakers have said, is the strong civic engagement. And I don't want to imply that it's always been rosy or that at every stage the outcome that you see before you was considered even a remote possibility. But the community determination was there. The drive was there. And with the best tools of democratic government at our disposal, at our disposal and it turns out it's not all that high tech really, we fostered civic dialogue we developed shared facts, and in community workshops, we created a framework for our participants to apply reason, to evaluate alternatives, and make decisions. And here we are. As you walk through the building and grounds today, what you're gonna see infused throughout are references to Hopkinton's heritage. The start of the marathon, the headwaters of the Charles River, our enjoyment of nature and outdoor recreation. Each of these are essential reminders that public education has community context. Public education can be an extension of and can strengthen the fabric of our communities. Our schools can aim not only to provide students an educational foundation for future professions, but also to inspire students in their future roles as citizens. Inside the building, there's a dedication plaque with a quote from an ancient Greek philosopher. It reads, the foundation of every state is the education of its youth. In that regard, my true hope is that the legacy of this school for the students who begin their journey here will be the connection that they gain to their community. And that the legacy of this school for Hopkinton will be the well-educated future citizens who start their journey here. My sincere thanks to the selectmen, the school committee, the superintendent, town manager, town hall, school department, professional staff, my fellow citizen volunteers on the elementary school building committee, and to the many volunteers before us from whom we picked up the baton. And on behalf of the committee, I have to reiterate, thank you to DRA Architects, Compass Project Management, Call Antonio Construction, and all the other members of this project team, as Mike Shepard so eloquently outlines. Special thanks to the Massachusetts School Building Authority for partnering with Hopkinton on this community project. To the people of Hopkinton, on behalf of the committee, thank you for engaging with us and for trusting us to move this project forward. To my family, thank you for being a partner in this project and providing the opportunity for me to strengthen my role as a citizen. And on behalf of the other volunteers on the committee, we wanna thank all of the families who did the same. With that, I would like to introduce our state representative, Carolyn Dykema, and first start by thanking Carolyn and our state senator, Karen Spilka, for their service and interest throughout this project. With that, I will turn this over to Representative Dykema. Good afternoon. 
I have to say, I, the last time that I was at this location, uh, Mike Shepard's grandchildren were stomping in puddles, I think, in the mud in their knee-high um, rubber boots. So talk about transformational. Um, as I look around now, I, I'm not even sure I can cite kind of where we were that day when it was just kind of a, a pile of, of soil. So, so many congratulations and recognitions to go around today. Obviously, um, the school, the elementary school building committee, what a phenomenal um, effort this has been. All the volunteers that put in their time. Um, school committee members, past and present. Um, selectmen, past and present. Citizens, um, the architects. Uh, Fran Colantonio from right here in the neighborhood and his team. Um, just so many to thank. Uh, including Jack McCarthy from uh, Mass School Building Authority and the Treasurer Goldberg's office. It's really been wonderful to have such a partnership with Jack, who has literally, I think, been on this project since day one um, through kind of many transitions. And I want to thank him for his commitment to um, assisting the town and helping facilitate um, the journey that has been uh, the Marathon School and to celebrate with us here today. It's wonderful to have you here, Jack. Um, so, you know, I was thinking about this building and as I sat in the audience and I was looking up, it's really obviously a spectacular building and, and what, a, what a, a difference in so many ways from Center School, which served the town so well for so long. This is really kind of a next generation um, looking forward for the community. And I was thinking not only is it a beautiful building, I think it's also a, a beautiful statement about the community here in Hopkinton and about the work that is going to be happening within its walls. Um, while this is a, a construction project, it's, it's really a labor of love. And it says a lot about the respect and the gratitude and the um, just the appreciation for the work that our educators do in this building, for the important learning that our children are going to do in this building, uh, and really generations of future children, including all of those who are here today. And it's wonderful to have so many um, of our students here participating. Um, today in this this ceremony and I guess you know to reflect uh, briefly on Joe's comments about the marathon school and kind of the meaning of marathon which is wonderful marathon is very much a, a, a part of Hopkinton here and to name this school seems very appropriate for the obvious reasons but I would say for the maybe not so obvious reasons um, we all know education is a marathon and not a sprint um, it is it is day after day of tireless work, um, working with our young people, mentoring, and really um, fostering not only our education, but as Joe said, the sense of civic engagement here in this town. And I can think of no more fitting and appropriate um, building and, and majestic project to represent all of those really important values of the residents here in Hopkinton. So, so much to celebrate here today. Just a huge, hearty congratulations to everyone who played a role in this project, and I would say that pretty much everyone has played a role in this project. So congratulations to all. It's um, my pleasure to present on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts um, and the legislature, the, the House, and I'll be introducing my colleague over in the Senate, uh, Senator Spilka, to, to say a few words as well. But on behalf of the Massachusetts House, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the Marathon Elementary School and the Marathon team in recognition of the joyous and momentous occasion of your ribbon cutting and open house today and your outstanding commitment to Hopkinton students. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and extends its hope for future good fortune and continued success generations to come given by the Speaker, Speaker DeLeo um, as well as Carolyn Dyke, my state representative. I would uh, love to have the pleasure and the privilege of introducing my colleague in the Senate, Senator Karen Spilka. Good afternoon. I'm between you and the uh, tours, so I will try to be quick. I wasn't certain I'd be able to actually even make it. I was at a family event. But I wanted to come, because I also was here at the groundbreaking. And I feel like I went through with the community, uh, the whole process of having the decision made in such an incredibly uh, wonderful way. It was, it was at times tough, 
but the decision to build the school here and the school that was eventually built here, this magnificent school, uh, you know, it, it is really a testament to the whole community. I look out and I see so many people that have been involved and I applaud the school committee and the administration and the board of selectmen, uh, the school building authority. The Jack, so, thanks so much for all that you do and all of your staff across the state to help bring beautiful buildings for our children and many generations to come. For good or for bad, they last for many generations to come. Uh, thanks to the community for voting uh, the way that you did. It was a long process. I know there were lots of meetings and, and discussions and workshops, but the outcome is tremendous. And the decision to name this the Marathon School, I applaud uh, the, 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 the community with its decision, and I thank <coughs> Council General, I thank the, the BAA for being here, Tim Kilduff for being here and bringing the, the Marathon here. Hopkinton stands so much for what the marathon stands for in terms of persistence and strength and the spirit of the marathon and the sister city to Marathon Greece. I was really proud to be able to see the sister statue of Kyriakides uh, in Marathon Greece many years ago and to have this all come together to symbolize the community of Hopkinton is, I think, a very powerful statement. And it's a lesson for our kids. All of you have role modeled for our kids as to the civic discourse and the democratic process of making decisions and coming up with a tremendous decision for the benefit of our kids and of their education because they will be carrying this forward also, this civic discourse and the need for civic engagement and involvement. So I personally thank all of you and I also have a citation, so if you can come up and uh, give you one from the Senate, similar, a little different though. It's a Senate citation, and it reads, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Hopkinton Elementary School Building Committee in recognition of the joyous occasion of the Marathon Elementary School ribbon cutting. Uh, and we extend our great you know, best wishes and continued success it's signed by Harriet Chandler, Senate President, uh, and myself, Karen E. Spilka, as Hopkinton uh, Senator, and it's dated today, June 9th, 2018. Congratulations. like to bring uh, the head of the school building authority, our very own Jack McCarthy up, who has been to so many of these kind of events on Saturdays, on Sundays, very dedicated and committed and caring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Senator. Uh, on behalf of uh, Treasurer Deb Goldberg and the rest of the Mass School Building Authority family, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this. You know, the mission of the Mass School Building Authority is to partner with Massachusetts communities to support the design and construction of educationally appropriate, flexible, sustainable, and cost-effective public school facilities. And this school certainly meets that ideal. Uh, Benjamin Franklin once said, an investment in education pays the best interest. And we at the MSBA are proud to be your investing partner to the tune of approximately $13 million. Um, I've, I've heard a lot of people thank a lot of people, so you, you get to hear me a little less because I'm not going to repeat all that. The only thing I want to say is when I got here and I talked to the architect, I said, how'd it go? And all he did was praise Compass and call Antonio. And when I talked to, to uh, Fran, he did the opposite. He thanked Compass and, and the, and the uh, architects. I haven't seen Jeff. Is Jeff here? Yeah, there he is. So I'm sure when I talk to Jeff, he's going to say the same thing. And that's when you know a project went well, when the, the, you know, the consultants that you folks hired have so much respect and esteem for each other. And to that, I just want to congratulate the town because we didn't choose, MSBA didn't choose these consultants, you folks did. And you did a great job and that's the result of doing a great job. Um, your chair of the selectmen um, talked about you know, the, the vote that failed. The, this is the second time 
Holliston's been invited for a project at center. And the first time it was in 2010, and, and that failed. And here's what you probably don't know. The day after that vote, I got two phone calls early in the morning. One was from Senator Spilka, the other was from Rep Dykema. And, and right, you know, right away, they, what can we do to get Holliston back in? Uh, it. Did I say Holliston <laughs> twice? It's because I'm thinking of you, Fred. And uh, so, you know, how can we get them back in? And it's not an automatic thing. And if you don't believe me, call the town of Lincoln. They've been trying to get back in after a failed vote for like six years. So I just want you to understand you know, that your rep representatives at the, at the state level were on the phone and were bugging that, you know what, out of me, till I said yes. And so, you know, we, from that phone call was a meeting at, at the state house that folks from Hopkinton came in. And I just want you to understand the dedication that these folks showed this project and, and just want you to know that. Um, Dan, yeah, you can applaud their leadership. Sure. Dan Valentine was a, a reporter for the Salt Lake City Tribune, and he once described the school as a building of four walls with tomorrow inside. And we at the MSBA are proud to be part of Hawkington's tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Tim Kelduff. I happen to be a very, very proud citizen of uh, Hopkinton, Massachusetts. I'm a, a member of the Boston Athletic Association, and I'm uh, damn proud to be here today, and I'll tell you why. The world is, uh, seems to me to be full of no's. Uh, every time we turn on the news, that's what we hear. No, you can't do this, you can't do that. This community has chosen to say yes, across the board, in a number of areas. The, the building behind us, to me, is almost staggering to think about what will happen, what's gonna, is, uh, gonna happen in this school for the kids that follow uh, start, uh, beginning this fall, it's really phenomenal. But I want to take, I want to follow Mike Lord, uh, Mike Shepard's lead. There are a couple of people here I want to introduce to you briefly uh, before we make the presentation. But I want you to understand that what you've built here has far-reaching, uh, a, a far, far reach. I did my own little research, and there are other communities uh, in the United States that uh, may be named Marathon, Marathon Keys, as you know, there's a marathon in North Dakota. There is, there is no school in the United States, and I would argue the world, that has been able to build a quality institution that embeds the spirit of Marathon in its very foundation. There is none. This is a very, very unique situation. There are a couple of people very quickly out to, to, to make my point. Uh, Alpha Omega Council in Boston uh, does a lot of work uh, spreading Greek culture and a lot of other things. They, they sponsor an essay program. Our middle school kids are involved. Nick Cordes and uh, Peter Lemonius are here from the, representing the Alpha Omega Council, which again starts to stretch our reach. Uh, in addition, Constantine Philopoulos is a representative of, of an organization called SHAPE. It is the largest. Uh, Recreation Physical Education Association in the country, and he's here representing that national organization. Uh, so, two stories before we make our presentation. Uh, I referenced the fact that uh, this is a community of, of yes. There are two people uh, who I think exemplify, uh, exemplify this philosophy of, of yes that come from very, very distinct backgrounds and in really very, very different places. Uh, the first is the Council General of Greece. I, some, I think we sometimes forget that the Greek government has a, has a presence here in, uh, in New England, happens to be headquartered in Boston. But, and I've had the experience of working with some, with some people from the council, some consulates. But uh, the consulate that just uh, took over about a year ago, Stratos, uh, Stratos is a man of yeses. Uh, he has high level experience in the foreign ministry representing the Greek government. But you know, it's interesting because when his country says you need to go to Moscow, he says yes. When you need to go to, well, it's now it's your turn to go to Ankara, he says yes. And then luckily, he says yes to his, uh, his work now in the city of Austin. Stratos Felinio is, is 
to me, exemplifies everything that's good about international cooperation. And one other quick point before we hear from him. In addition to speaking Greek, he speaks English, French, Spanish, Russian, and German. This is a first-rate diplomat, and we're really proud to have him uh, with us here today and to have him serve his country here in Massachusetts. I think I'm supposed to say thank you in seven languages. <laughs> so thank you, spasiba, merci. And uh, Tim has been a very uh, precious friend of Greece. Uh, he's a founder of uh, 26.2 Foundation. And we've been working very closely with Tim, with the Alpha Omega Council, uh, which organizes with the Consulate of Greece, the Boston Marathon with ceremony, uh, and uh, which oversees the Marathon Educational Initiative. So there is a group of people that uh, are uh, gathering their forces to promote uh, and to raise awareness about uh, the Battle of uh, Marathon and its importance. So, uh, State uh, Senator Spilka, State Representative De Kema, uh, Executive Director McCarthy, Honorable Elected Dignitaries, State Officials, Educators, Dear Parents, Friends, Students, uh, thank you, Joe Markey, for uh, the invitation to come here. Uh, and uh, I have to say that I was very excited during the flag raising ceremony because I saw Boy Scouts. And for over uh, 13 years in my youth, I was a Boy Scout myself and the troop leader of a Boy Scout team. So the motto, be prepared, uh, is a well-known uh, known, uh, motto uh, for me. Uh, so be prepared to do something good and noble for our fellow humans. This is the very uh, notion of uh, service. And I feel proud that uh, here in Hopkinton, you have chosen to erect a statue of a Greek of uh, 1946 Boston Marathon winner Stylianos Kyrakidis, the first charitable winner in the world, a person dedicated to service, a person who ran to fundraise for his country Greece, which at that moment of history was emerging out of a devastating war against Nazi Germany. So this statue in Hopkinton, like the Boston Marathon itself, is a bridge, a bridge between Greece and Boston New England, and uh, Boston, as you know, is the Athens of America. So I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here with you to celebrate another bridge of friendship, the Marathon Elementary School, a cultural and educational uh, bridge that will unite Marathon and its cradle, Greece, with Hopkinton in New England. On behalf of the Greek government, I would like to express my uh, ex uh, appreciation and uh, gratitude for all your efforts. I praise your decision to name this school after Marathon. It is thanks to the Battle of Marathon that ancient Athens remained free and democratic. It allowed the, the cradle of modern civilization to develop and the basis of modern education to spread. This is precisely what I wish uh, for the Marathon Elementary School. I hope that soon it will evolve into a model of innovative education and modern learning. Thank you and congratulations. You've done a great job. Uh, one more person who exemplifies uh, the concept of yes. Uh, you recall, I think it was 2013, there was a uh, travesty that took place uh, during the, uh, the running of the Boston Marathon. The BAA, who had uh, run this, uh, this race for years, uh, had a number of decisions to make. They had to think about how they were going to play that, that tragedy and how they were going to move forward. Uh, and they could have gone in a number of different directions. But heading the organization uh, at that point was uh, a, a gentleman named Tom Grilk, who's had, he had a successful career as a corporate attorney, lots of other experiences, runner himself. But there was a great weight on his shoulders, and he could, have gone, he could have taken the organization in a number of different directions. But he said yes to, we will continue, we'll build a stronger race, we'll be respectful, we'll be respectful of, the, of, of what happened, we'll be respectful of the past, but we're going we're gonna to say yes to the future. So it really is a personal privilege uh, 
to introduce you to Tom Grilk, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Boston Athletic Association. He's saying no, but you're coming up here, pal. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. The, the fact that I didn't know I was speaking can assure you, I think, of a certain blessed brevity here. The term marathon for us and going back to 490 BC, uh, yes, it implies a long journey, but as much as anything, it implies new beginnings. In 490 BC, when the Greeks were able to drive back an invading army, it meant that the people at Athens and elsewhere could get on with their lives the way they wanted to. It was a new beginning for them. For us here in Boston and in Hopkinton every year on Patriots Day, the marathon that certainly all starts here is the beginning of spring. It's the beginning of a kind of a nicer time of year, even though occasionally the weather can be absolutely <coughs> wretched. There's two inches of rain blowing into people's face, but it's the start of something every year. It's coming out of what's gone before and moving forward. And now you have here the marathon school, which is a new beginning and a way forward for generations of some very, very fortunate kids in Hopkinton as they begin their educational journey here. So we at the BAA are delighted to be part of everything we do here and to join with you and celebrate and congratulate you for what is a wonderful day. Good for all of you. Thanks for the chance to be here. The, uh, the wreath that you see in front of you uh, is a wreath that's been fashioned from an olive tree in, uh, in Marathon, Greece. Uh, the process is pretty simple. It's, uh, it's dipped in gold. This is the same wreath, the similar wreaths that are given to the winners of the Boston Marathon. They have, have been presented the last few years. But Lawrence promised to put, uh, put this in the, uh, in the showcase in the front as a way of solidifying the connection between Hopkinton, Marathon Greece, and the sport of marathon. With that, I think we're ready to cut the ribbon, so. Robert.